What's good y'all, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we gotta talk about what happened on this year's Money in the Bank. Personally, I enjoyed the show. I had a great time watching the show. It was, uh, the crowd was electric. There was some crazy things that happened on this show this year. It was fun, man. And it definitely had some things in motion for SummerSlam. And uh, I definitely want to talk to y'all about uh, some of the things that were just really uh, noticeable and very important on the show and, and the things I, I really enjoyed the most. So the first things first, we got to talk about the Drew and CM Punk feud. Things have reached an all time high and the crash out tour from both of these individuals is about to be epic. So in order to talk about that, we have to talk about the men's money in the bank. They started off the show with the men's money in the bank ladder match. You had um, Jay Uso. You had, um, of course, Drew McIntyre, Carmelo Hayes, L.A. Knight, Andrade, and Chad Gable in this match. And this was fun. This was a great way to start off the show. The match was brutal. Uh, the, there was a sunset flip maneuver from Andrade onto Melo onto a bridging ladder. There was a uh, Chad Gable, I believe, gave L.A. Knight like this uh, over-the-top rope suplex onto a bridging ladder that was between the announce table and the ring. Um, it was just hard-hitting. This match definitely was fun. Definitely in the sphere of money in the bank. Very hard hitting. But we got to talk about what happened at the end. So it looks like Jay, of all people, is going to win. He's in this. He's really. He's at the top of the ladder. He has his hands on the hook of the briefcase. It looks like Jay Uso is going to win money in the bank. Then out of nowhere, Drew has a ladder and hits Jay off of it. He climbs to the top of the ladder and he grabs the money in the bank briefcase. And at that point, you knew the prophecy was about to be fulfilled. You knew it. He was telling everyone, I told you this was going to happen. And we all knew if Drew McIntyre won the money in the bank, that he was going to cash in on the World Heavyweight Championship match between Damian Priest and Seth Rollins. So, I'm going to talk about the ramifications of that. I, I see some people that are not happy with Drew Whitty because of what happened later on in the show. So, I'm going to get into that. So, we're going to have to skip around, obviously, because this I'm talking about this whole Drew and CM Punk situation and how things are playing out with that. So, we're going to go to Damien versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. But before we get to that, Priest was talking to everyone backstage, you know, all the members of Judgment Day. He's like, hey, y'all, look, I'm about to go out there and do my thing against Seth Rollins. I need y'all to do me a favor. Nobody get involved in my match. We know Drew has won. I don't, even if Drew tries to cash in, nobody get involved in my, in my match. Let me win this on my own, and including you, Finn. And everyone agreed, but the camera lingers on Finn, and Finn's like, sure, sure, boss, I got you. And it was the way he said it. And it, I like what they did there because they've been planting the seeds of Finn Balor turning on Damian Priest. And a lot of us thought that that was, that was going to be the thing that happened tonight because of the seeds they've been planting, but they pulled a swerve. So we got Damian Priest versus Seth Rollins. Dirt throughout the match, both of them were looking at the entrance ramp, waiting for Drew to cash in because we know Drew said he was going to cash in. At one point, Seth Rollins was like, come on out here, Drew. I'm waiting on you. Even the same thing with Damian Priest. Damian Priest was like, come on out here, Drew. We're waiting on you. Seth Rollins definitely looked good out there. Didn't look like he missed a step. He was hitting a lot of high-flying moves. He was moving all over the ring. He looked good out there. It was good to see him and, you know, just moving around effectively. Seth Rollins, at the beginning of this match, had control just with the high-volume offense that he was uh, putting in. And at one point in the match, uh, Priest um, 
ends up getting hit with a stomp early in the match and he kicks out for a two for a close two count you know close well it was a close three count like like two and a half or whatnot so he hit the stop early in the match he kicks out in a near fall then this is where things and i want to fast forward to this because this is where things got weird like you can definitely say it was a botch something didn't something the timing was off here so um they go to the top rope. I believe Seth Rollins hits the suplex off the top rope. And then he tries, you know, he goes into the Falcon Arrow. But then it got reversed by Damian Priest. And then it got reversed again into that Falcon Arrow, I believe. But the problem is, when the ref went for the one, the two, Damian Priest didn't even kick out. So the ref is going for the three. And technically, he kind of hits the three. But he waves it off as if it was the two. So everyone saw he hit the three. Like, it, it was one of those one, two, he purposely doesn't hit the three. Like, he makes the motion, but he counts it as two, even though we know that was three. And then that's when the crowd started booing. Because everyone saw it. They didn't show the replay. Obviously, you didn't want them to show the replay. But even the announcers had to try to cover that up. But yeah, he didn't kick out. So the match should have ended. And then right after that, that's when Drew McIntyre's music hit. And he ended up cashing it in to make it a triple threat match. And I think a lot of people are believing that what possibly went wrong is Drew's music was probably maybe supposed to hit right when he was about to go for the three count to kind of distract everybody or something like that. But it may have been a miscue with Drew's music not playing at the right time. But even then, if I'm Damian Priest, and I know this is not the finish of the match. I know they were probably trying to time it, but I still would just go ahead and kick out. Just off of, just to play it safe, just kick out. Unless he was, legit. some people are saying he may have been legitimately stunned or knocked out. So I don't know. We don't know. We may find reports on it. But either way, it definitely was a botch. It was very noticeable. But Drew ended up cashing in, making it a triple threat match. We knew that was going to happen, right? So, as Drew's trying to get some offense in, of course, CM Punk comes in and he attacks Drew McIntyre. And once again, it's a triple threat match, no rules, so it's fair game. He starts beating the crap out of, out of Drew McIntyre. Crowd is going insane. I'm going insane. It was great. Drew's trying to run for his life. A CM Punk ends up knocking him over the timekeeper's area, picks up a steel chair, start whacking the hell out of him with the steel chair over and over and over. Then he gets some type of production cables, wraps it around his no uh, his neck, and trying to choke the life out of Drew McIntyre, man. So at this point, he goes over and he's looking at the World Heavyweight Championship belt. And then he picks it up. Drew gets back into the ring, stumbles back into the ring, and that's when CM Punk hits Drew McIntyre with the World Heavyweight Championship. Then he goes, sits back on the announce table, Indian style, and that's when Damian Priest hits his finishing move on Drew for the one, two, three pin. And just like at WrestleMania, when CM Punk was sitting on the announce table after Drew got cashed in on by Damian Priest, once again, Damian Priest retains with the help of CM Punk, and he's sitting on the announce table the exact same way as Drew is once again screwed over. Fantastic. This was fucking great. Now. There are people giving criticism saying this was a waste of the money in the bank. You could have used this for someone new. You essentially threw away the money in the bank for an angle that was all, that didn't need it. To the people that are saying that, I, I can understand why you feel that way. Me personally, I didn't even have Drew winning. I still had CM Punk screwing him out of the money in the bank match. But I, th I thought Carmella would have been a nice choice. Cool. But I think the reason why they did this is because we know Damian Priest is most likely losing the championship at to Gunther. Nobody, Gunther's not losing on a cash-in. He's not. 
They they built this up as this dominant guy. They're gonna have him hold the championship for a while. The same thing with Cody. I don't see anybody else beating Cody right now for the foreseeable future, and he's not losing the title on a cash in. So they didn't want to kind of book themselves in a situation where the person who wins not gonna really be cashing in on either of these guys, not anytime soon. So I think that's the reason why they went that route to kind of get it out the way to really enhance the feud and to really intensify Drew's crash out. Because, yes, Drew would obviously be upset that CM Punk screwed him out of the Money in the Bank match. But what's even worse is you win the Money in the Bank, cash in, look like you're about to win the match only for him to attack you and waste your cash in. That's even worse. So I think... It's a combination of intensifying the story and obviously them not putting themselves in a situation where they have to book someone to either cash in on Cody or cash in on Gunther, which we know that probably wasn't going to happen in their favor anyway. Some can say you can make it work, but I think that's probably the reason they went that way. And me personally, I don't have too much of a problem with it because I know the crash out is going to be even more epic and... It is because at the end of the show, and like I said, I'm skipping around. I'm really just talking about the CM Punk and Drew thing. At the end of the show, during the press conf, uh, press panel, you have, uh, you know, Big E out there. You have Wade Barrett and uh, I forgot the other uh, young lady's name, but they were out there talking. And Drew walks in. He doesn't have a mic, so you can't really hear him unless, you know, you're trying to listen to what, you know, the cameras you know, getting close to see what he's saying, and he's crashing out, bro. He's crashing out. He's like, CM Punk, I know you're here. You're probably going to talk trash. Come out here right now. Come out here right now. Referees try to stop him. He pushes both refs out the way. Then Adam Pierce tries to stop him, and he back elbows Adam Pierce right in the head, knocks him down. Crowd's going crazy. They're chanting CM Punk. And this is one of the telling things. In his rage, he sat up there and said, I know where your family lives. And that's when I was like, oh, he's this crash out is so immaculate, so good. He said, I know where your family lives. And that's when Wade Baird had to get in between Adam Pierce and Drew McIntyre. And even Wade said, if you hit Adam Pierce, one more time, your career is over. At, and at that point, Wade Bear is trying to be the one to calm him now. Even Drew picks up a chair and throws it. It was good. This was fantastic. Fan fucking tastic. Oh, I forgot to mention before all that at the end of the match. If y'all remember, the stipulation is if Seth doesn't win then he can never challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship as long as Damian Priest is the champ. Seth walks over there, sees CM Punk sitting on the table, and he is pissed. He's cursing. They've reignited the Seth and CM Punk. He's irate. Corey Graves had to go over there and stop him. I forgot to mention that. That's very important because now things now, things are really heating up because Drew fucking despises CM Punk. And now Seth has reignited his hatred for CM Punk, for him getting involved in this match and now costing him an opportunity to get the World Heavyweight Championship back. Oh, he was pissed. I love this. Fuck, oh man. This was great. Fantastic. Can't wait to see what they do with Drew and CM Punk. And I really can't wait to see what they do with Seth and CM Punk. So had to talk about that. That was really the uh one of the very important stories of this night, man. Um let me kind of go into a little bit of order of everything else. Uh Sammy versus Braun was a really good match. I love the fact that they gave Braun Breaker a new theme song. It's much better than his other theme song. Love that. That was really great. Uh, Braun is a freak athlete just the moves and the things he could do majority of this match he was in control Sammy was selling as the ultimate underdog but once again Sammy is really good at doing that and building up and the crowd was pro Sammy getting behind him he feeds off of that um 
Sammy ended up beating Braun Breaker with a Huluva kick clean for the one, two, three pin. I did see some people oh, were upset with that, comparing him to Hulk Hogan. You guys are fucking idiots. Um, no, I, I didn't think Braun Breaker was going to win today. I didn't think he was going to lose clean, but it's okay because he lost to one, a champion in Sami Zayn. He didn't lose to no J.A.G. Two, this guy also beat Gunther. I know Ron beat Gunther, but Sammy also just beat Gunther. So it's okay for him to lose to someone like that. And as you see at the end, Ron is just pissed. He's seething. And it's maybe the typical story or the, the you know, the story you've seen of someone new and athletic and cocky thought they could beat the veteran and they got outplayed. They got outmaneuvered. So, I don't think it's over. I do think they may have another match, but it may be a multi-man match at SummerSlam. So we'll see. But either way, this was a fun match. I, in my opinion, the right person won. I don't think Braun takes a real big damage in losing to fucking Sami Zayn, who's the IC champ, who just beat Guthrie at WrestleMania. So I'm I'm okay with that. Um, also, John Cena showed up once again to Money in the Bank. I believe he showed up at last year's Money in the Bank, but he showed up at Money in the Bank, and this time he had a towel and a shirt that said, uh, this is the last time now. And that's what his towel and shirt said, this is the last time now. Um, he wanted to let people know that he's you know, he's announcing his retirement from WWE, and um, he, you know, even on the shirt, it was uh, the tour Last, you know, last time now tour or whatever for 2025. So essentially next year, he's going to be at his last Royal Rumble, his last WrestleMania. You know, he's going to go through um, the calendar year uh, for the last time through WWE uh, with WWE. Uh, I believe on the press conference, he said like he's maybe 30 to 40 dates. So, you know, we'll be seeing John Cena throughout 2025 that will be his last year that he says himself so far that he will be with wwe he was even getting emotional when he was thanking the fans it was it was a dope moment it was a, a very dope moment to see john out there and it's just it's just the the testament of father time always gets us man um so uh, i'm very interested to see what they do for john cena's last match at wrestlemania it's gonna be very interesting to see who's gonna be his opponent and do you guys think he should get that 17th world championship title on his last run. Y'all let me know how y'all think about feel about that. Um, next, we're going to get into the women's money in the bank match. There was definitely some botches in this match, but there was definitely some fucking carnage in this match. First and foremost, I don't know how Zoe is even. She, I don't even know how she finished the match. Zoe was in a situation where she had Lyra... Um, I, I always keep on. I think I said it night this time. Lyra. Yeah. Lyra. No, nah, it's Lyra. <laughs> I always fuck it up. But Lyra was on the land on the ladder, right? And then she was close to the turnbuckle. So Zoe goes to the top rope, hits a flip of some sort, but she overshot it and ended up looks like hitting the back of her head on the edge of the ladder. I was like, oh my God. Brute brutal bro i don't know how she finished this match and that wasn't the only spot that zoe ended up taking uh at one point zoe and eo is at the top of the ladder fighting for the briefcase eo ends up picking her up over i'm not sure what maneuver this is but she ends up dropping down and there's a bridging ladder on between the you know between the ropes and the ladder in the ring ends up packing up zoe on this brutal spot just throw up the x for zoe that was insanity so obviously the the crowd favorites in this match was tiffany stratton and chelsea green since chelsea is uh from canada or whatnot and earlier in the match chelsea and tiffany set up some la uh some tables outside the the ring as they're attacking naomi so you see um chelsea um at the top of the ladder and you also see tiffany up there and tiffany ends up pushing 
Chelsea off the ladder through the two tables on the ring on the floor. That is a crazy spot for a man or a woman to take. She's at the top of the ladder and falls all the way down through the two tables onto the floor. Chelsea Green was essentially X'd out of it. And Tiffany was left at the ladder. And she is your new women's money in the bank, which I do feel like, I'm, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. You know, crowd really likes her. Uh, she's, you know, pretty solid in the ring. I do feel like there may be a situation at SummerSlam where I could see Nia Jax maybe winning. But Tiffany's only biding her time to betray Nia. I think that may be a situation that may happen. So we'll see because, you know, Tiffany and Nia are kind of in this temporary alliance. So we'll see how that play out. But definitely a fun match. Brutal. Ladies were getting packed up left and right. And we also finally got to talk about the main event. Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton versus The Bloodline. This was fun. This was everything I wanted it to be. At the beginning of the match, KO was focused on the bloodline. He didn't even move when the interests was were happening. As y'all may know, Kevin Owens is dealing with something personal. His mother's in the hospital. So he, you know, got his extra motivation. He's locked in. He's staring down Jacob Fatu. He's staring down the whole bloodline. He does not move. He's locked in on destroying them. So this was great. Um, also, at the beginning of the match, there was a FU solo chant. Crowd let it be known that they don't fuck with Solo. Solo is one of the biggest heels right now in WWE. Getting a FU Solo chant at the beginning of the match. Um, KO started beating the living crap out of Tamatanga. I'm talking about just all the aggression and passion. He was he was packing up Tamatanga early in the match. Uh, Jacob Fatu finally gets tagged in against Randy. This was a thing that we were looking forward to. And Jacob got hit with a draping DDT that Randy usually does off the second rope. But then he got right back up. And the crowd popped for this. He got right back up like nothing even happened. Randy got into his position like he's about to hit the RKO. And he looks up and he's like, oh, shit. This guy, he he is, he he's something else. They, they really, they didn't do too much with Jacob, but they did just enough where you, you're interested in what he can do and you want to see more. Right? They didn't give us too much, but they gave us just enough, and I enjoyed that. KO, throughout this entire match, you know, he definitely had the dog in him. There was one point where KO was getting beat up viciously. Uh, essentially, it was like a one-on-three situation. He wasn't able to get to tag out for a while. But even when he's in the corner, getting beat up, he's fighting everybody that's in the corner, man. It was, it was so great. Uh, at one point, Cody ends up getting a hot tag and finally getting into the match. He starts taking out everybody in the bloodline. Cody even dives at Tongaloa, and as he hits him, Tongaloa falls back, and the back of his head hits the announce table. That looked kind of brutal, not going to lie. Then, of course, you know, if it's a bloodline match, the ref is going to get knocked out. So the ref ends up getting knocked out by Solo, and that's when all the baby faces start hitting their finishing moves on Solo, packing him up. Then we get to the outside because, you know, Cody and them, they said, fuck this. We're going to do a triple power bomb to Solo like he did to Paul Heyman. We going to pack up Solo. But as they were trying to set up the simple, uh, uh, triple power bomb through the announce table, Jacob Fatu comes in for the save. Jacob goes at Cody, I believe. But in Cody, I believe, ends up moving out the way and squashing the referee even more against the steel steps. So, like, oh, the ref is really packed up. So, at that point, uh, KO hits the frog splash on Jacob Fatu through the table, which was a nice spot. They um, KO kept super kicking Jacob Fatu after he destroyed the ref some more, laid him on the edge of the announce table, goes to the barricade, hits the frog splash on Jacob Fatu. He goes to the table. Really great spot. Crowd's going at crazy. But ultimately, ultimately, Jacob Fatu comes in for the save because Cody was hitting the, the patented three crossroads. He hit one. He hit two. Then Jacob Fatu gets in the ring, goes to the top rope, Cody ends up getting hit with some type of maneuver. I don't know. Uh, Y'all let me know the name of it. It was a beautiful move from Jacob. Ends up getting hit with that. 
and then Jacob picks up Cody, and then Solo ends up hitting Cody with the Samoan spike. But he, before he says it, before he hits him with the Samoan spike, he tells Cody, "Acknowledge me." Boom! Hits him with the Samoan spike. They pick up the referee, and the referee counts to one, two, three, and Cody ends up getting pinned by Solo Sokoa, which we all know is setting up for Solo versus Cody at SummerSlam. There we go. Remnants of when Roman Reigns last year got pinned by Jay Uso. I believe that was it was at Money in the Bank as well. In that tag match, he got pinned by Jay Uso, which ended up setting up a match between Jay and Roman Reigns at SummerSlam last year for the, the championship, the WWE Undisputed uh, Championship. So the same thing here. Cody ended up getting pinned by Roman, I mean by Solo, who's claiming himself as the tribal chief. And now that he pinned him, he's going to want that match at SummerSlam. So most likely we're going to get Cody versus Solo in the main event for SummerSlam. And hopefully, hopefully the, uh, somebody returns. Hopefully it's Roman to put a stop to this nonsense. I don't think Solo is going to win against Cody. It just doesn't make sense. For Solo to be the one to dethrone Cody yet. But I think they're going to be setting up a greater story. And during that Cody versus a Solo match. Potentially with Roman returning to regulate some things, man. But overall, this was a fun show. I enjoyed Money in the Bank this year. Y'all let me know what was your favorite match uh, from the show. What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to easily give this a uh, 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, eight almost uh like close to a nine i have really i this was fun for me i enjoyed this and i can't wait to see what happens on monday night raw can't wait to see how things play out to SummerSlam. i appreciate all the love and support y'all shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm seeing us be the youtube rest of the champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace